Hello, my name is Peter Thomas with Galaxies. Today we are having our second podcast on the subject of complexity. Joining me is Natty Gurr, the founder and chief thought leaker at Galaxies. Hello, Natty. Hi, what a title I got. Thanks. It's true. <laughs> um, so our, our subject last for our last podcast was on the origin of complexities where we explored what it is, uh, how it manifests itself, its root causes, and how to turn it into a competitive advantage. This podcast, we will be discussing a specific issue with regarding complexity and IT departments. Fortunately, Natty has a vast amount of experience with a major Fortune 1000 company called Frinkton, where he was the CIO. But we'll begin with a conversation more generally about the structure of corporate IT departments. So my question for you now is describe, or it's not really a question per se, but why don't you start out by describing the structure of a corporate IT department and why they tend to be so complicated. So the classical one, because everyone is slightly different. But um, in a nutshell, um, IT has, um, so IT is usually structured by silos. And each and every silo is a different expertise within IT. So usually you will have a group of people that will support customers. You have a group of people who developed um, new solutions and support them. A group of people that uh, specialized in the hardware or infrastructure uh, layer of the IT solution. And um, usually another beloved group that deals with cybersecurity. And um, the the way that usually IT organization structure is that every one of them is responsible on one element, but all of those elements are connected to be a whole. And if uh, you as a consumer expect to get the functional system that are working from your IT department, you expect all of those components to work together, but they are autonomous, so they can make their own decision. They are created from diverse people, so as a, as, as a department and inside the department, they see the world in different ways, and they are obviously tightly interlinked. And the end result is that uh, since it's very hard to know what people will do, you're dealing with very high level of unpredictability. And when you're dealing with high level of predictability, when you can't... Um, expect what's going to happen, then uh, that means that you're dealing with high level of complexity. So why don't we back up a little bit and why don't you give a brief overview of what the, the real value proposition of an IT department should be and how an organization's uh, strategic initiatives add to that complexity <laughs> or add complexity to the IT department. Okay, um, so value proposition, you need to provide technology that will increase the business profit. That's uh, I think as simple as that. Um, otherwise, there's no reason for your existence. Um, how it connected to the business, so it should serve the business strategy. Why it's complex? Because if IT is complex, the business is 10 times more complex than IT. Just um, the fact that you, as a business, need to predict how the future is going to be look like. And you need to create strategies to prepare your group in order to be ready for the future. It means that you're dealing with vast amount of uh, complexity because the world as it is today is extremely unpredictable. Um, you can create three years roadmap now and after one year it's completely obsolete and probably many three years roadmaps after the corona crisis went obsolete. Yeah, it's like the world completely changed. Um, and IT needs to support it. So all the complexity that the business introduces the business actually reflects down to IT because IT now needs to find a way how you are creating solutions or which um, technology you are preparing to do, which services you introduce to your customer that will be flexible enough 
to support all those unpredictable change that business might go through through his lifetime. That sounds like a difficult proposition to find the right technology to help handle unpredictability. Can I add that? And so there is a, uh, there's a very interesting, uh, so even with DIT, there's complexity, okay? Not, not the structure, like the technology that you're dealing with. So you are managing technologies, you're putting together a suite of technologies that no one ever created to work together. So you, you have an ERP system and you have a CRM system, for example, and no one ever mm, created them in a way that are going to work together. So they're autonomous, same idea, they're diverse, okay? They're interlinked. So even within the component of IT, of IT, there is a very high level of complexity that not necessarily exists in other departments within the organization. So how do you how do you solve that? That sounds like a full-time job just dealing with that. Well, I don't think it's so how do you solve it? I don't think it's solvable. <laughs> um, <laughs> how you are dealing with that? Uh, you need to know the enemy. So this is a villain, okay? Uh, if uh, I'm the hero, if, if as a CIO you're the hero, your villain is, is complexity. And complexity won't go away. It will just grow. Uh, any attempt to simplify complexity end up with more complexity. So the trick is to not, not the enemy. You have to learn what is complexity, although most of the people are not doing it. You have to understand what are the conditions that create complexity, what are the leverage points that you can play with in order to adjust yourself to complexity. Uh, luckily for us as humanity, uh, other people from other disciplines, regardless of management, uh, thought about it and this data is available. For some reason, this data didn't populate into management, including my team. And when this data is missing, then you are puzzled in front of technology or in front of complexity and uh, it's not a secret that many 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 um, or most of the IT organization whatever they like it or not uh, struggle especially from the perception of a um, customer that they are providing services internally make sense yeah. yeah that makes sense so what would be uh some some key performance indicators to let you know how you're doing and how you're influencing complexity and handling unpredictability. What are you looking for? That, it's a tough question, but uh, let me... Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, so, let's, let's start with that. If, if complexity is the results of um, autonomous and diverse and interconnected elements, you're definitely looking for three of them, three, three, those three. So you want to see what is the autonomy level within an organization. Uh, let's take uh, NIT as an example. So um, do we give any autonomy to departments within IT to make their own decision? Does department gives it to groups? Does group give it to teams? Does team give it to individuals? Or it does not exist? Um, so this is like you're looking for the level of autonomy that you have. Then um, you're trying to understand diversity. So um, how many um, cultures you have in your group? How many um, level of uh, compensation you have in your group? Uh, how many uh, origin from any part of the world you have in your group? You know, everything that uh, defines diversity, uh, you want to understand to which level you have it as well. And the last but not least, you want to understand roughly what is the connectivity so how in average how many people connected to how many other people on average uh, how many groups connected to how many groups on average how many number of technologies i'm using in my day-to-day -day work in average to how many bosses i'm reporting in average how many uh, uh, people i manage so everything that uh, gives you indication about those three give you um, uh, an indication where you are in terms of dealing with complexity. If you want to understand or measure how successful you are, 
it's extremely hard because the only way to measure the, your success is to find out what is the level of um, unpredictability that you're doing now which is hard to measure yeah um, and do you see decrease in the level of unpredictability if you see decrease in the level of unpredictability unpredictability sorry you definitely did something right uh, and you're definitely helping yourself to manage complexity better make sense yeah, yeah. so the opposite of that would be you are predicting correctly about what's going to happen um so th that's a uh, if you lessen if you lessen unpredictability you made correct decisions about the future so there's a paradox for me okay so you, you you're right like you what you said that they, they picked what i'm what i said okay um the problem that so the stuff that can be predicted and stuff that can't be predicted okay the world is not black and white so uh, within IT if you are dealing with everything that you're dealing with engineering base it's not complex it's more complicated and obviously everything is complicated you can predict it's, it's much easier to predict um, everything is complex by nature we say it's unpredictable so if I'm getting clarity into it that's what I'm doing by understanding where it is um, it doesn't make me more it doesn't make easier for me to predict it's still unpredictable okay um, I just um, know what I'm doing actually is I'm preparing people to deal with unpredictability uh, that's different yeah so that, that, that's the key point so you know if, if, um, if you train people to follow order and to do whatever they are being told and then there will be something unpredictable they stand yeah they don't know what to do they 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 puzzled they're waiting for someone to tell them what to do uh, definitely is something that you want don't want to have when you have a crisis okay or when you're dealing with something unpredictable uh, if you teach people how to deal with unpredictability when they meet unpredictability they know what to do so they will um follow certain attributes that we can discuss it if you want that um, help them to better deal with the unpredictability that rose but you have to train them to do it because we all been in organization we all know how how it works um, organization are not set today to teach you how to deal with predictability organization more set up to teach you how to deal with more complex complicated world which means that you need to follow straight processes or predefined processes which is good as long as you are dealing with com complicated world but worthless when you're dealing with something that is not um, predictable because you don't know what you're going to deal with yeah so the script that you're following not going to be valuable at all when you're meeting something that is unpredictable well, um, obviously, you can speak to this at a high level, having been the CIO of Freakin. Um, let's talk about a real-life example um, that I think would bring some insight into this conversation. Uh, what was, and it specifically revolves around Hurricane Harvey, which which pretty much devastated Houston, at least a good portion of it, and had a big impact on a lot of the major companies down there, including Freakin. Let's talk a little bit about the state of the IT before the storm. What happened to Freakin specifically? And what steps did you take to mitigate the trying circumstances uh, that you were having to deal with? Okay. So, you know, you expect it to be order and then transition and then chaos, um, but it will be the opposite. So the set, set before was chaos, then there was transition, <laughs> then was order, okay? okay. Um, and um, I'll explain why at a high level. So when, when we started to work as a team together in IT, we, we realized that we are going to deal with major threats, business threats, okay? It, it came more from business perspective. So we saw where the automotive industry go, 
we understood that um, uh, there are threats, uh, whether it's um, selling online or um, automated car or um, shared car. And obviously we knew that in some point of time, IT will have to deal with the major um, crisis. Um, and I was, uh, um, I had the, 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 how do you say it? I have the privilege to be part of the bug 2000 and then uh, the internet bust. And when the internet bus came, uh, it was, do it, or you are not alive. Um, and many organizations didn't survive it, okay, because they weren't prepared for it. So um, when, when we started to work uh, uh, with IT, the main uh, changes that we've done is we took those principles that I spoke about before that are uh, how how organization, how system that dealing with vast amount of complexity are working around us. And we try to make them as the guiding principles for, for teams, for our teams. And obviously that uh, was chaotic for them because it's the first time that people um, had to deal with um, the ideas of, okay, I have to I have to manage myself. So you now we're very keen about you have to manage yourself because when complexity hit the, the fence, um, no one's going to tell you what to do. And if you are not trained to make your own decision, to synchronize with others and to move forward, you, you just stay paralyzed. Nothing will happen. Yeah, it's like same as war. Yeah? If you no one not teach you how to take care of yourself, when someone shoots at you, guess what happened? You're going to pee in your pants and run to the first place that you can and hide. Um, it won't help anyone. Um, so preparing people is very important, but those, those, this preparation is chaos. So when people see it for the first, like it's, 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 um, it's stressing, it's new, it's different level of uh, requirements and commitment that usually they are not getting used to. You know, I have a boss, like he's telling me what to do, and it's, it's, there's a lot of convenience uh, around uh, hiding behind someone's back, especially if it's a big back. Um, and saying it's not me, I just did the best that I can rather than um, you're responsible for that. But this is extremely important to build the momentum or to build something. So when, when Harvey happened, as you mentioned, we, we, we suffered. Like we, we prepared the best that we can and it's the first time that we actually dealt uh, with a situation where we lost the building and um, Got nothing to do, uh, like it doesn't really matter what happened, but eventually we lost also the data center, so we have to go and restore it. So we follow our plan for restoration, just we tested every year and everyone says thumbs, thumbs, thumbs up, and we ex executed it, and then we find out, okay, uh, there's a test and there's reality. So all the system that uh, we should restore worked, but uh, they actually depend on 100 other system that no one thought about it, no one tested. Um, properly, and now in order to run the business, you have to you have to have all of those 100, but um, they're not available. Yeah, the system, the business is um, underwater. Um, there's not accessibility. Um, literally underwater. And physically. literally, literally underwater, and, and okay. another uh, and very close not financially, to financially, physically, physically underwater, right. and physically. Um, so the, 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 the campus is very close to a uh, um, waste restoration uh, facility, so it oh, was also um, exciting. spices spiced with, uh, you know what, <laughs> uh, very wow. smelly. Um, anyway, um, to make this story more interesting, I wasn't available. I, I was in some event and I was unavailable. Um, and what happened is that um, no one wait for any instructions so people understood what happened and the teams start to emerge from nothing uh, so the group together people they went into the building they took any equipment that they could they drove to austin in parallel someone uh, tried to negotiate with uh, our second facility for no more space so uh, we can wreck those services, they came there. So bottom line, in three days, um, they've done all the key system that needed order to run the business. And luckily for us, those three days was weakened. So there was um, zero impact business-wise, although the impact might be 
extremely high. Um, so, so, so basically what you're saying, your training to make the teams in the first stages of chaos actually made them more independent and have the ability to take action and make decisions. Um, and in this case, take take the right decisions to help, help business stay above water, figuratively. Yeah, so no, this is a really extreme situation, yeah? So usually you don't need to go to that extreme, um, but... Um, but, but that's the idea, okay? So if people know what complexity is, you know, and they, I never ever went and told them there's something that calls science about this or, uh, you know, all, all the interaction was on a regular um, English discussion. We, we never del uh, dive in into the science behind it. Um, and everyone that was there can testify that they never heard it, okay? But uh, they did, without even paying attention and uh, went through all the um, changes that needed in order to make a group um, better or more um, more equipped to deal with complexity. Well, extremely interesting and I'm glad uh, that story had a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, so it did. <laughs> I, I think this has been a uh, very interesting podcast. Thank you very much, Daddy. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this this one up? No, just thanks thanks for your time. You're doing an awesome job. Fantastic.